the risk versus reward and the risky decisions versus how many risky decisions we make over a lifetime, when it can catch up to us, these decisions matter. Start thinking that they matter. Don't think it's just another day of sledding. It's a decision that's gonna last over a long period of time. All right, so it's just getting light here. It's our third day for the AST1 class, and it's going to be our field day. Curtis is just getting the bulletins up. Our scale over here, they could be between size one and two, and what can a size two avalanche do? Very. Right, could very injure or kill a person. So once we start seeing those size twos, it's, it's a big deal. Even a size one with a terrain trap can cause something that we don't want to be involved in. Basically, the basis of this AST1 course is it's eight hours of class time and then a full field day. So it's, it's 18 hours of avalanche safety and it's really just your driver's license to be able to go in the mountains. It gives you the basis to be able to build up and go to your AST2 and go on to some more technical avalanche training. This is extremely important. Jack and I actually were talking about last night uh, how we were really interested in going to the next level and doing our AST2. Not only are you gonna be traveling through terrain and putting yourself in scenarios that you're gonna be at risk, but your friends and your family and whoever you're riding with is also gonna be at risk in the mountains too. So for everyone to be on the same page, know how to communicate with each other yeah. and know where safely to travel, how safely to travel, and how to read avalanche bulletins and all of that kind of stuff. I cannot believe that we haven't had it till this point, to be completely yeah. honest. Yeah, that yeah, we should have had it a long time ago. Yeah. Very eye-opening, awesome experience. I would absolutely recommend it to anyone that's into snowmobiling in the mountains at all. So basically start a course time, guys. We're, um, we're here at Comina Creek. You've talked about the terrain. We've looked over the bulletin. Um, this is the very tip of that North Columbia region. Uh, and then literally right across the street. So that cup lock is the Caribou Bulletin. Ready to go? Thanks, Ma. I feel bad. Please, guys. I do that. I don't normally do that. So what I want to know now is how stiff, how firm is that snow? And what's sitting on top and what's sitting below those firm or soft layers, right? So there's a resistance scale that we use. Um, we start out with our fist, right? So we're going to try and push our fist into the snow. So I'll start right at the top. And that's 100% of fist layers, right? Come down into here. Still fist, that would hurt my nose, right? So now I switch to four fingers. My four fingers in there, just about right four fingers. And below that is a one finger layer. So I've identified that there's potentially a problem in the snowpack right off the bat, right? We have a hard layer that's sitting over top of a soft layer. What we really wanna know is will we see those large shooting pack avalanches? So just like a compression test, we start with easy, moderate, right? And then hard. And we're looking for propagation. We're looking for a shooting crack across the entire block. One, two. We start from the elbow. One, two. Now we come around with our hard hits. Oh. oh. We're on a very shallow slope here. If we increase that angle, this would obviously, <clears throat> this would have fallen off and hit us in the face. But Marshall, let's uh, both get in here. And just give it a, see if we can tip it over. Tip it? Yeah. Oh, Gently. Wow. And there wow. we go. And we can, if we look at it with shadows, we can see the weak layers within that. Uh, we can see the planar surface. And now imagine that on a 45 degree slope. Yeah. This block of snow would be like a truck hitting you, right? Um, extremely solid. You know, it's just something we don't want to be involved with. It's really cool when you can come out here and verify what you're seeing in the bulletin. It really puts weight on what we're reading out there. These types of results really make a scale back, right? It was on the high end of hard, but it's still happening. Low probability, high consequence, but this is a consequence you don't want to get involved with. 
So we jumped ahead of the group. Uh, one of the reasons we, we come ahead of the group for this particular exercise is we're kind of surprising them. So they don't know that we came up ahead to set a scene, so I buried a couple transceivers up in the snow. They're gonna arrive. I'm gonna play the uh, the, the scared witness. They're gonna have to rescue my, my two friends that are buried up in the snow. Um, and we kind of use this as a baseline. So it's just a really good way to sort of shock them into um, understanding where they fit into that program. This is a pretty basic scene. By the end of the day, we're gonna be searching um, a little bit more challenging or uh, a little harder scenes uh, and they're, they're gonna be able to succeed that much better. They're gonna be able to come back to this one and think back to the start of the day, right? And um, how much better they're gonna do at the end of the day. So it's usually pretty fun. We'll have some giggles and uh, we'll see where they stand. Hey guys, hey, hey, can you help me? Can you help me? Yeah, I want to talk back, man. You gotta help me. My friends are buried in an avalanche. I don't know what to do. I'm not really sure what's going on, guys. Can you help me out? Where did it happen? Right here, right up there. Yeah, you can see the tracks. It comes right down to right here. There's a tree that's right in front of us here. Hurry, guys. My friends, they're, they're buried. I don't know what to do. Okay, boys, let's get out here. Get going here. Let's get our chance to see if we want to search. Go, guys. Let's go. Let's go Fast. Boys. Come on, make this move. Move. Let's get ready to dig, guys. They're doing pretty well so far. Pretty good organization. Still taking some time, right? They don't seem to be in too much of a rush. Like them to be just a little bit faster, right? Let us know when you get tired. Come on, clean it out, boys. We got you, buddy! Okay! Hi! Hey. Hey. Twelve minutes! How long did we say we had? 15. 15, 18. You guys asked amazing questions right off the bat. Is the scene safe? Yeah. How many people are missing? Everybody in search mode. Yeah, you, you did. Check, you, you, check my transceiver as the, the witness as well. We, want, we always talk about that base level, that base foundation of learning, right? We did the base theory. We're working on our base companion rescue now. We set a bar, we set where we are. Um, we're gonna learn, we're gonna talk about what we just did, what went right, what went wrong, and then we're gonna practice this all day. I guarantee you, those the looks of fear, confusion, by the end of the day, they're gonna be looks of confidence and, and, and looks of, uh, like you're gonna, you're gonna know what you're doing. That's our goal out here. That's the goal of instructors. It's the goal of the AST-1 program, right? Start us on that planning. Start us on that companion rescue. Get us to hone our skills with our gear, okay? So we set a bar this morning. We're gonna raise that bar this afternoon. By the end of the day, you guys are gonna be extremely confident in nailing this off. I promise you're gonna leave your gloves on and you're gonna have warm hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a signal. There. Alright, got him! Johnny's alive! Johnny! Got Johnny! So we're chopping that block of snow around us. Even one hand, guys, use like a big lever. Chop those blocks really, really fast. Let's go. Keep chopping, keep chopping. An avalanche just happened. Are we safe? Holy cow, holy cow, guys, I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, I was, we were, we were coming into this bowl feature with, our, with like my two other buddies, and um, I felt this thing hit me in the back, and I got up and I turned around, and all my sled's there, and my buddies are gone. I don't have any idea where the other two guys are. Let's get everybody in the search. Okay. Who's the leader? That's number one. Jack, you're our leader. Okay, I'm in. Okay, we're good. No hanging threats. Let's go Trust for it. Good. Okay, I'm going out to code with Jack. Okay. All right, start breaking up chunks in the snow. Let's go. You got it. Got her. Okay, mark him. Is there another buddy? Smith was directly behind me when this avalanche hit. The code's got a signal, boys. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Get in there, boys. Start digging, chop it up! Let's get him! Got him. Okay. 
We got Smith. Smith, are you all right? Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Seven minutes off this morning. Wow. Nice work, boys. Good digging, Dill. Five minutes. Seven minutes off of this morning, boys. Yeah. And a That's harder it. scene, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. We started this morning at 12 minutes. We did it. How did it feel? Did it feel better from the first one to the second one? Yeah. Much. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Was there was a notable it was, you noticed it, it wasn't as hard. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't look like you were on Yeah, we all just looked at each yeah. other. Yeah. <laughs> And then even after that, uh, you know, the, the kind of that little brain challenge we had at first, you guys got right out of that and picked it right up and still killed it, like still ch killed that time. So um, congratulations. Um, you know, we've got uh, Richard, who's Dylan. <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> Thank buddy. you. Last yeah. one. Uh, Colin. Thank you. Good Thank job, you. Buddy. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Switch that around. We want the screen on the inside. Okay. Yeah. yeah this is next time. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Thank you, Curtis. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, you guys have been a lot of fun, man. Very respectful group of young guys. Super rad. Um, we could tell you really liked it. Um, but just keep practicing. We're here all the time with Instagram, social media, Facebook, email. If you've got my phone number, questions on gear, questions on anything that might have come up, that aha moment, um, you know, don't be afraid to contact us. And just remember that as a group, right, it's really hard to process and remember all of this stuff. But as a group, you each bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. And that's really where communication comes into play, both pre-trip planning and in the field. We need to be able to communicate on both aspects, right? Make sure we're all comfortable with everything and we're all making the right decisions. The AST1 is in the books. Yeah, yeah, it's completed. We've been wanting to do this for years now. And for it to finally come to fruition and be able to accomplish and complete the course is pretty incredible. Yeah, a lot of the stuff was really eye-opening, especially in the classroom. We spent eight hours in the classroom and a lot of the theory we talked about was really insightful. One thing that really stood out to me was the risk that you take every time you go snowmobiling is one thing, but when you apply that to the 50 times we ride each year over the next 10, 20 years we're gonna be riding, that risk adds up. Yeah, big time. Whatever we can do to minimize that risk every single day that we go out, and that starts with our decision making, you know, the type of terrain that mm -hmm. we're venturing into, that um, is really gonna make a difference, I think, in our lives. So that's one of the biggest things that I got out of the class. Definitely, and something that's really rubbed off is, you know, how Curtis talks about you know, look at the bulletin with a cup of coffee in the morning. That's something, even if we're not riding, I'm, I'm pretty much doing every day now is I, I read the bulletin every morning just to get a feel for how things are going on throughout the season. It was really nice to tie it all together the next day too and head mm -hmm. out into the field with Curtis and Marshall. It added so much value to have somebody there critiquing your practices, making yeah. sure you don't develop any bad habits, showing us how to do things uh, more specifically than just reading a book or reading something online. I think um, being able to go out immediately and practice that stuff that was invaluable. Those guys rocked at Avalanche Canada and Frozen Pirate. I mean, the, I mean, the course was insane. It was so cool. From you know, Curtis did you know pointed out some stuff off the trail on the way up there. We started in the parking lot. You know, all the steps that you really should start to take as a group. Um, you know, outside of Avalanche Train, just being safe. Yeah. It, it, it was cool. It was just an awesome day from mock burials to, you know, surprising us with different things that we would have to just automatically do with no training. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe if you like what you see. We got part three coming soon. Yeah, part three is going to be sick. A lot of riding. <laughs>